Hi, I'm William Welter, principal oboe of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Rimsky-Korsakov's Scheherazade is basically about this Arabian king or sultan who takes a new wife every night and then sends her off to be executed. Scheherazade becomes involved with this cruel sultan and devises a plan to tell enchanting and mystical stories over the course of a thousand and one nights to appease him and ultimately her life is spared and he's cured of his sanguinary resolve. What I love most about Rimsky-Korsakov's music is this ability to create a picture. It's almost like a movie and we really need to put the stage makeup on and try and conjure this scene. Smelling the incense in the room and feeling the tight weave of those Persian carpets. In this next solo, there is an opportunity for the oboist to exhibit a wide range of emotions and dynamics, starting very softly, gradually growing through a large crescendo with these whirling triplets that remind me a little bit of twirling mystical characters from ancient Arabia. The third movement begins with a beautiful theme played by the violins. Later, this happens again with the cellos, but the oboe joins, playing almost as if an additional member to the cello section. I think of it as a dialogue between two voices, both represented by the oboe. It's a particular challenge because the oboe must play very soft and very low, which is an incredible difficulty. I recommend finding a suitable reed that's very flexible and has a great deal of ease and response for this piece. Lastly, we have a short but very beautiful dolce solo that is also marked a piacera, or at your leisure. The first measure I think of as being a bit more declarative and the second a bit softer finally disappearing to the final E natural, which is held for an uncomfortably long period of time. In order to ensure a consistent performance, at least as consistent as us oboists can, can achieve, um, I really find it helpful to do something that I like to refer to as flight simulation. Giving performances, whether it's just for your recording device or playing for friends uh, before an audition uh, to simulate the experience of being under pressure. 
So many times you're at home in the practice room and you're feeling very inspired, but once you get to the actual performance, suddenly it's, you know, you freeze up. So practicing, putting yourself under pressure, at least for me, has been a very helpful tool. I think there is a lot to be said in regards to the role of a musician as an actor. We must understand our part and understand what's happening around us to best serve the music. I find it very helpful to do a lot of reading, study about the composer, what they were thinking at the time, and um, learning about the score and what other voices are doing, because this sort of thing really does inform the way one should play a solo. There should be a tremendous amount of joy in making music. Remember what attracted you to this art form in the first place and stay inspired.